See, I told you guys in the booth I wasn't going to get past Romans 8, so. <laughs> they were asking for my notes for today, and I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to get past Romans 8. All right, so this is the afterburn. Okay, so if you guys have comments or questions about today's teachings, you can line up. Teaching, you can line up. And uh, if you're on live stream, our Shamish team over there will also take care of your requests there. Okay? All right, you guys ready? Good. All right, we'll begin with Angela. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm really enjoying this series. Um, my question is, in Romans 8, you were talking about being under the spirit of the flesh and being under the spirit of Elohim. If you're operating under the spirit of Elohim most of the time, and you make a mistake and, you, and you're then operating under the flesh, does that mean that you're vacillating back and forth? No, I mean, we, 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 do, we do tend to do that. What he's watching, what he's always watching is the speed with which we recognize it and repent. Okay? In other words, he gives us a path to walk. Every now and then we step off to the left or the right. Well, he wants to see, are you going to step off, realize, uh-oh, and get right back on, or are you going to go sightseeing for a while <laughs> off the path? Because this tells him kind of how you really feel about it, okay? And the level of contrition you have when you realize, ooh, I went off the path. You need to truly be repentful of it. Listen to the repentance teaching again, if that's needed. But it's about the uh, Deuteronomy 8 to the heart, is that you want to do it right. In the flesh, we're still going to mess up every now and then. And as long as you're consistently showing him that you really hate it and don't want to keep messing up, and you keep repenting and moving forward again, I think that that's not going to be a problem. You can be fine. He doesn't expect us to be perfect right now, where it's not going to happen. But we can, at least in a somewhat perfect way, filled with integrity, respond quickly to when we sidestep a little bit. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. And by the way, the quickly has to do with it's two things. One is how quick you're aware that you step, stepped off the path. That's one level of it. This, because in the, when you're new, you may not even realize you stepped off the path. It may take a minute, and then you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm going the wrong way. The other piece of it is once you recognize, how fast do you fix it? Right. Which is the more important one as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Once you realize you made a left or a right instead of going straight, how quickly do you fix the problem? Okay? Because once you recognize, you go, yeah, I know I messed up, but I'm going to just do this a little while longer, then I'll fix it. No. See, that's not going to work so much for him. Okay? He wants to see that gap getting smaller and smaller and smaller from I realize I messed up to how fast I fix it. Okay? Now, if it's something you really like to do that you shouldn't do, it may take a little while for you to fix it, but it's hopefully each time you slip, it gets a little smaller and smaller so that you're fixing it almost instantaneously to the point where you catch yourself before you actually do it, okay? You still think it and you're about to and then you catch yourself like, no, 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 I'm not doing that, okay? All right, Amy? It's kind of what Angela was talking about, but it's like, I almost feel like I could drive myself crazy. Like, did I do this right? Should I be like this? I mean, like at work, with other, all these personalities and people are rude or whatever, I'm like, do I just keep smiling and keep being nice to everybody? I mean, what does it look like day in and day out and everywhere I go? And <clears throat> it's more than like you say, the mechanics, you know, because the mechanical part is pretty easy, but what is running in our heads and, and driving us? Right. I, it just seems like my life is just so small. And like, what am I supposed to be doing more? Like, what does this look like? My attitude or my negative, like, well, that person was pretty snarky. You know, like, does it everything? Is it everything? Well, okay, let's, let's break this down a little bit. So first of all, everybody's life compared to his is small. So we're all in the same boat. So nobody should think their life is small. Okay, it doesn't matter if it looks in the world, he sounds like your life is big. It's still small, okay? Everything is small compared to him. But he's looking to see you on your individual journey. But now the challenge as far as like the expectation that he has for you, okay? I'm going to say that in the beginning, you're going to interact with people. Those people may act in whatever rude way, whatever it is. And then you may respond or not respond. 
after the situation finishes, I'm talking about initially when you're first going through these things, stop and analyze what happened and think, did I behave appropriately? Could I have done it differently? Could I have done it better? Was there anything I could have changed? And then use that information to affect how you handle the next one, okay? Where does it expand? How far out does it expand? Look, it expands to the point of you being the best Yeshua like you 24-7. So I pray sometimes. I'm like, Father Abba, help me, be, help me to be the kind of person that you would want to live with forever. That's the key. And so it's just being nice and being humble and just... Look, there's, it's not just... It is, yes, being nice, being humble. But also we're not doormats either, okay? So you still should have a voice to say, hey, I don't need to be treated that way or, you know. You, know, there, you still have... But your approach is what ha- was what matters. Right, it's like, right. hey, you know, you can be either give it right back to them, then that, then you're on their level, or you can just say, or just walk away from it. And right. I mean, how you handle it. Some things should be addressed. Some things not. So okay. So that's just one aspect, though. I mean, what what about like the the laws? Like we live and we aren't we supposed to obey the laws of the governing party, like the speed limit and the. I mean, look, does it everything? Look. How we approach Caesar, whatever, right, you know, Pharaoh, is also how we approach all authority to some degree. Mm -hmm. So yes, we should be respectful to the law, Mm -hmm. because it's the law of the land that we live in right now, Mm -hmm. okay? And that teaches us how to respect the leadership? And it teaches teaches us how to respect authority in general, okay? Uh And and law in general, Mm -hmm. okay? Um, And, but also you have to understand the expectation of the way the law is implemented, mm-hmm. okay? For example, the speeding one, which is probably a challenge for almost everybody, the, the law, what am I, not the law of like the written law, but those who are implementing it have an expectation that you're going to speed, okay? And within certain limits, they'll let you speed, okay? So the law, you have to also understand in the context of how it's actually being implemented by Caesar as well, mm-hmm. okay? So well, how do we know that we're doing enough? So for example, I know what the expectation is when I go to a different state or wherever I find out, how is this implemented here? Mm-hmm. Well, here you're pretty much good up to five miles over. Mm-hmm. Here you're pretty good up to, you know, it's just short of 10 miles over, whatever it is. So they, there's, you, you find out the expectations. That doesn't mean you should speed. I'm just simply saying is some things are not as black and white because they're not enforced in black and white. Well, right? some days I feel like a nut and some days I don't, but. Um, yeah. But it just seems like, am I doing enough? Like, well, is it just I, coming I like he- mounds because it's no nuts and it's, <laughs> it's dark chocolate. Like coming here on Friday, I started doing that, you know, being more of a participant, coming here on Fridays and mm-hmm. doing the blessing and I'll come here on Shabbat and then I try to do this. I'm like, am I a wheat sometimes or am I a tear sometimes? Stop I'm worrying like- about that. Don't worry about what you are. What you want to do is just look and say, am I living life in a way that's pleasing to him according to, not, not everything you do in life is actually covered every minute of the day yeah. by what he says, mm-hmm. okay? I guess I got these grandiose, like, I, it's just more compact, compact. Yeah, and also look, he also wants to see you, like your personality and what you bring to the mix as an individual because you're not the same as Kathy who's standing next to you or the next person. So he doesn't want a bunch of Stepford people that all looking to act exactly the same. So he's also watching how you live your life and the verve you bring to it and the mm-hmm. quirky stuff that everybody brings differently that, that you bring that flavor, right? Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. But he really wants to know mostly, are you subject to him? Are you, when it comes to you knowing what he says and something you want may be different, that you've always put him first. Okay. That's the main thing. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. That's a good question. All right, Kathy. Thank you, Rabbi, for this teaching. Great. <laughs> um, I, uh, at work have a, and probably we all do, in the greater Christian community, have a lot of people that are into, you know, a lot of stuff that you were saying. Um, But uh, as far as like tongues and and this, and this, when when it says here, let's see, are we doing it? When it says, we do not know, that you brought out very strongly, what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case for us with groanings unutterable. 
that's wonderful. But what what I see happening is that they'll say, okay, the spirit knows, but that same spirit has a remittance in me, so that spirit's in me, so I'm groaning. Now I realize the unutterable. That okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is not going to go well if we're going to allow for them to come up with everything they're going to come up with. They're going to come up with something to justify. So I'm not going to figure out a way to address right. everything they're going to throw at you, Okay. You have just been shown what's happening. Right. They are going to say whatever to justify what they, that's the flesh, by the way. Right. They want this stuff, okay? They want it. Yes. Because they want it, they're going to find a way to say, this is what it's talking about when it's not. So it's it not is a it. twisting, and that's what I just need yeah. to understand. Yeah. It's a twisting, okay, yeah. so that they can continue. All right, so language, as we saw in Acts, being understood was the miracle. So why is all of a sudden language not being understood a miracle? Okay? It, does, it, it goes the opposite of what we would understand scripturally, that he's not the author of chaos and confusion, he's the author of clarity and, and understanding. Okay? So now when we can't communicate, he's saying you don't have to worry about that. Okay? I can understand through the spirit what you're, what you're going through. You don't have to find words. You don't have to even make a sound. Okay, that's what he's saying. Right. All right. Now, you say that to someone who's coming out of the charismatics, who believes very heavily in this stuff, they're going to argue with you. But they can argue with you about everything that we do Torah-wise. So <laughs> this is just one other thing. Correct. All right, so I'm not worried about that. Oh, I'm not worried. I just wanted to make sure I was think that my thought is it's a twisting. Look, it's very purpose. clear. Okay, mm -hmm. the spirit is pleading our case with groanings that aren't even utterable. That's straightforward. Right. Okay, we are not saying anything. It says we don't know what to say, so we're not talking. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Shalom. All right, Olivia. Hey, Rabbi. Hey. All right, I have one question and one comment. My question comes from verse 815, and it says that you received the spirit of adoption. What does that mean? Okay, so basically, the um, when we talked about the understanding of the rock teaching, we talked about the spirit being the intrinsic nature, right, or the, the fullness of something. He's saying you were, through this embracing of Messiah, the intention there was that you would be adopted as if you were actually one of the children of Israel. Because it started off with the covenant of Sinai, which was with the children of Israel. And so this path, which is the spirit, not the flesh, brings adoption. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I just wanted to say I really liked the NPC um, analogy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. I thought some of the youth might. Yeah. It kind of, it made a lot more sense to me because sometimes like when I approach like being on the path, it's really confusing for me because I mean, I haven't heard all of your teachings yet. So it just really simplified it for me. Like you have things that you needed to accomplish. You need to do the works in order to receive righteousness. And then that gives you eternal life. It just really simplified things for me. So thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, live stream. Okay, from first one for M. Abraham Nixon says, could the quote unquote live in accordance to the flesh also apply to those who call themselves altruistic? Yet it's for their benefit slash feelings, meaning I do this for that, I do this and that for, but it's really about them. Um, yeah, I would, I would agree with that somewhat. I mean, look, you're supposed to feel good when you do things altruistically and all that kind of good stuff. The main difference between according to the flesh and according to the spirit is that it has to do with, is it in conflict with the spirit, then it's flesh. Because it says the flesh is enmity to the spirit, okay? So doing nice and good and generous deeds in, in an altruistic way is neutral in some ways, depending on what you're doing. Could be spirit, depending on what that would be, okay? I mean, if you want to generously pledge to the campaign, that would be you know, from one side of it. But if you want to just generously take, give funds to some good charity because you want to be, you know, altruistic in some way because it makes you feel good. I do, you know what? I do a lot of very nice things for a lot of people. You know why I do it? 
Because it makes me feel good. Okay, we need to, okay, understand that just because you do something and it benefits you doesn't mean that it's of the flesh. It's when you're doing something to benefit you instead of doing what he said to do because you don't want to do it because you want to do what you want, that's when it's according to the flesh, okay? I mean, he wants you to feel the joy he feels in being generous. As a matter of fact, and when you do it, it, it has a certain addictive nature, nature to it. You want to do more of it. And you want to give more and you want to help more and you want to be a blessing more. And part of it's because of how it makes you feel. It feels good. And it's supposed to. Okay, next. Okay, uh, Alejandra C. She had put, they put this in two parts, but sometimes I feel like I quit even though I keep trying, but I don't feel a connection like I had before with Elohim. It's heartbreaking, but Romans eight twenty six says, the spirit knows what we need. Can you help me? Can you help me? Like how I know there is a good relationship with Elohim. Things always happen whether you are good with Elohim. So what should I look for in knowing my relationship with him? Okay, so look, you, you just became the sort of spokesperson, poster child for like 90% of the phone calls we get, all right? It's, it's, it's a hard thing for a lot of you to understand that you're, the thing that you're lacking is, is what I would call discipline, but let me make sure I explain why. You're looking for a feeling or a, a, an immediate result of some sort, or you're looking at results and you're connecting them incorrectly. You have to be willing to do what you're supposed to do and do it when and how and everything else, regardless of any immediate result and regardless of how you feel. And so you're dealing with an emotion. You're saying, well, I used to feel this way. Well, Christianity wanted you to feel that way. That was their whole thing was emotion. Okay, it was all about generating a feeling or you know, a variety of feelings. It was all about emotion, okay? And so let's not go back to that. Okay, here it is on the screen so I can read it again. Okay, sometimes I feel like I quit even when I, even though I keep trying, but I don't feel a connection. Okay, so look, the point is, this isn't a, a spirit knows problem. This isn't a groaning problem. This is, you're not looking at it this way. This is a game that you need to play to run to win and just do what you're told to do by the one who made the game. All right? So you know what? If I don't feel like coming on Saturday, I'm coming anyway. All right? If I don't feel like tithing, I'm tithing anyway. If I don't feel like looking at all the labels on the boxes to make sure what the ingredients are, I'm looking at it anyway. Okay? So if, if I'm not, you know, if I, if I feel like, I'm going to go to the other side of it. If I feel like, you know, ogling some woman, I'm not going to do it. That's discipline, right? If I feel like, you know, pick whatever command, it'd be something I, you know, I'd want to do something, but the command says not to do it, okay? I'm going to bring discipline in this because I have an expectation. This goes back to the other verse talking about expectation. But I don't have an expectation necessarily that I'm going to feel and see something right now. Although often you do, Okay? But the reason people quit is because the result isn't immediate enough for them, or because they're still struggling with the two things that make you struggle the most. There's one is, I don't like what, what, I, what I have to do, I really don't wanna do it, and I'm not liking the way people are treating me now that I changed my life, and all of a sudden all my friends don't like me, my family's mad at me, and everything else is going bad. Which, by the way, he said would happen, okay? So, you know, please, Please understand, okay? Yes, when you say things like, you know, um, things always happen, they do, okay? Whether things are good with Elohim or not, time and chance happen to everybody. Things happen. You know, sometimes the Father will give you a positive encouragement by you do something you're supposed to and it'll give you some sort of a reward, so to speak, right? Something good will happen. Sometimes, you'll do what's right and something will blow up in your face. And he'll let that happen too. The first was to encourage you, the other was to see how much you were serious because are you only doing it for the reward or are you doing it because it's right? Okay? Look, I asked you about being a player or not. Did I mention the game isn't easy? Okay. 
All right. I mean, look, if I if I said that there was a game, um, let's see. Somehow I recently saw, uh, I recently saw some of there's an app out there where you can play like some games and you can win some money, like Solitaire or something, right? All right. So I saw the ad. But I can imagine to win like a dollar, it's probably a fairly easy, you know, setup of the card so that you can win. But if it was like, let's say the prize was like $10,000, I bet you it'd be a really tough puzzle to do, so to speak, or solitaire. You understand what I'm saying? Because the greater the reward, usually the much more challenging the deal. Yes or no? Okay. We're being offered eternal life. How easy are you expecting this to really be? I mean, I don't know why anybody thinks this is supposed to be easy. Do you not understand? And again, I'm not picking on the person who wrote that. All of you. Do you not understand? He is vetting you. He wants to see if you can quit. I said this during the teaching. He's going to push you so hard that if possible, you would quit. Because he has to know. Oh, but he knows everything. Yeah, because he's tested you and he already knows. Okay? But he's going to test you. Plus, he needs you to know. He, wants, he needs you to know what you can do and what you can't do. Because you already are not embracing the fullness of what you're capable of because you believe you've set the ceiling here when really it's way up there somewhere. Because you can't see what you can't see until you get there and you go right a little above it. You go, wow, I can do more. I can handle more. I can take more. Take meaning like the abuse and other challenges. I mean, I can deal with more stuff than I thought. Oh, now your thought process, maybe I can go even higher than that. I never even thought I could do this much. He knew, but you didn't. He's got to put you through it, though, to bring it out. Okay? So if I were you, I'd be concerned about any piece of you that's got to quit in it. I'd be fighting that piece of me and make it. There's no quitting. All right? The only way to really fail at this is to quit. Because, and by the way, quitting could mean just giving up on life, or quitting could mean just going back to whatever else you think you'd rather, going to the flesh. But quitting is what will get you not to hear those words, okay? That is the only thing that is going to get you death, is quitting. All right? You cannot quit. You have to remember, he called you because you can. Stop quitting. He didn't call you because you can't. He also didn't call, call you because you will. He called you because you can whether you will or not, is your choice. All right? He called you because you can, though. All right. All right, next. I, I, this is for me, Rabbi. I just want, I, what you were saying right there just now and, and from what we were talking about on tour study last night, we were just talking about a person that's higher up has, you know, they can see more and over that. And... That's what kind of draw, drew me to you more is what the first time I ever got to sit and talk with you years ago, back in 16, when we visited first time, and you told me the vision, the stuff that's coming to fruition now. So, so what you were saying there is, is that we don't quit, is that we still have to, you know, I guess get the vision that you're giving us, you know, you're selling us that, you know, we capture that, and it's that motive, that to me, motivates me more is that, you know, I'm seeing this stuff come throughout since, well, 2016 when right. we first visit. Is, is that what, am, am I th seeing that right or is that? Absolutely. And look, and, and when it says in scripture that, you know, man without vision will perish, okay? But man isn't given the vision necessarily directly. The vision is given to the leadership who then shares it with the people. Moses got the vision and shared it with the others, okay? And so, and by the way, the vision isn't always shared beyond what you need to know at the moment, okay? Maybe more sketchy outlines of what's way further out, but more details about what's closer and nearby to happening right now, okay? You know, we always had a vision of having a fee site and a headquarters location for the ministry here. We also had a vision and still have a vision of having congregations around the world. But we need a hub to launch out of, to train people to launch out of, et cetera. That's part of why it's exciting for you to participate in the, in the pledge program for this property 
because the more we get sooner, the faster that gets done. And then we're able to then launch into places around the world because, you know, we could start 50 places around the world tomorrow and we wouldn't have anybody to lead them, okay? Because I have at least 50 places that want us to do something. I probably got 500 places want us to do something. We have nobody to put there, all right? And so that's part of the vision. But if you've been with us long enough, you've heard me talk about some of these things for a long time, and the vision has always been there, okay? And now it's actually going to be happening, at least some of the, the initial birthings of it, so to speak, right? And that's gonna be very exciting. All right, anything else real quick? No, sir, I mean, that, we can end there, I'm pretty sure. All right, thank you. I appreciate your patience, all of you on the live stream that we don't normally get to too much. Come to the zone meetings and get your questions answered there. Okay, so I hope that was a blessing to everybody, all right?